Hey Tubeubers, TJ Pyramid here, back with yet another movie review for everybody out there. And uh, I love picking up a movie, uh, of course, for a very cheap price, uh, because it has someone or there's something in it that I want to see, and not really having much interest in the actual film, uh, whether it's because of the director or the actors or whatever, which is how it was with this one. I'm not a fan of uh, either one of the actors in this film. Amanda Seyfried or Justin Timberlake, and uh, the movie is in time, as you can see. Um, but uh, this is written, directed, produced all by one guy, Andrew Nicole, which is uh, always, always pretty cool when uh, somebody does that much in their own film. Uh, I love it when I get a film, and when it's over, I'm pleasantly surprised on how good it actually was, which is the case with this. Uh, Amanda Seyfried and Justin Timberlake were both perfectly fine in this film. Uh, neither one of them annoyed me to any degree, which was very surprising. Um, so, in this movie here, basically, time is your money. Uh, as you can see on his arm there, this is basically how long you have to live, and when that runs out, uh, you're done. You die. Um, and it's like if you have a job, you can get paid, and you get more time you know, so, uh, you know, and everything costs like, you know, how much for this cup of coffee? Oh, it's five hours. Okay, so you put your wrist under the machine and it scans it and takes five hours off your time. Um, and you can transfer time between each other. You, you know, you take your hands and you go like this and whichever which way you turn it is who gets the time. Who's ever on top is the one giving the time to the other person, which is a really uh, cool concept in this. Um, so the Justin Timberlake character gets a lot of time from this uh, guy who's basically has so much time he's immortal, but he's just he's he comes to the point of like I really don't want to live, you know. He's like I've already been alive basically a hundred years or something like that, and he's like you know I just I just want it to end. So uh, falls asleep and before the guy leaves, he Justin Timberlake's still sleeping and he grabs his wrist and gives him all his time, leaves himself with like five minutes or something like that and uh, basically goes, goes out and sits on the edge of a bridge until he dies and falls off and uh, that causes all kinds of trouble for the uh, Justin Timberlake character uh, because you have these timekeepers which are basically like the cops uh, start hunting him down because uh, they find out that uh, this murder has occurred which uh, you know they think was a murder but was actually a suicide so they're hunting him down and uh, Justin Timberlake goes to the uh, bigger city, like one of the other districts, which is where he meets the Amanda Seyfried character. It's where all the rich people live, because, you know, they have, you know, 90, 100 plus years uh, on their clock. So, uh, you know, they're, 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 they become to the point to where they're almost immortal. Like, her dad has thousands of years, um, so basically immortal. And uh, basically almost like a Bonnie and Clyde type thing, like a Robin Hood uh, they rob these time banks and uh, take these little metal canisters that have like a certain number of time and you put them on your wrist and kind of looks kind of like a uh, um, stun gun type thing and you can give time that way. So you, they rob the time banks um, and they basically like the Robin Hood, they, they give these all this extra time out to all these people that need it in all these more poor districts. Um, so there's a good social commentary in this film too. Um, that in this film the government or the big businesses run everything which is just how it is in real life here but uh, I like the look of this film too um, like the buildings and stuff kinda reminded me of like the 1940s or the 1950s in their style I don't maybe it was just me but it kinda reminded me of that the, the cars look like they were like straight out of the 1970s like the cop cars are almost like these muscle car looking things uh, but that was really cool, just how it kind of had different times, uh, a different time look throughout different parts of the film and stuff. You know, like I said, the, the different vehicles, the buildings, they all had their own certain look like they were pulled out of a certain time. But, uh, yeah, I was really, really pleasantly surprised when this was over. Um, I enjoyed it. I would recommend it to anybody that uh, wants a movie that's a pretty original. This is a pretty original concept, I think. Um, the time is money thing, and the money is time. Uh, yeah, so I recommend in time. Um, don't let the actor or actress, or if you don't have a problem with them, then go see this. Uh, but uh, yeah.
go check it out. Um, even if you're not a fan of Justin Timberlake or whatever, put that to the side. Watch the film for what it is. Uh, they both do a great job in it. Um, and uh, in my update, uh, I had said I picked this movie up because there was a certain certain actress or actor or something this I wanted to see. Uh, and it's actually uh, the scene when he gets to the city and he's eating his breakfast or something and the waitress comes up. That waitress is uh, Emma Fitzpatrick, who uh, went on to be in the sequel to The Collector or The Collection. She's basically like the main girl in The Collection. But uh, that was the one reason I wanted to see this. It's like a 20-second part, but uh, it's cool. Uh, it's a cool just to see someone smaller and then they go into a bigger film like that. So yeah, there we go. Uh, in time. Check it out. It's a, it's a fun sci-fi film, indeed, for sure. Some fun action, um, great visuals, some good music, just an overall fun film. So there we go. Comment down below, subscribe, spread the word, and cheers.